Hi, this is Tara. Today we are studying Sutra number 17. What does it say? Vitarka vichara ananda asmita rupa anugamat sampragnyataha. Vitarka is reasoning, vichara is subtle reflection, ananda is happiness, asmita is individuality, the sense of I, rupa is form, anugamat is association. Sampragnyata is Samadhi with Pragna which is self-awareness. So in this Sutra Patanjali is giving the definition of Sampragnyata Samadhi that is the lower Samadhi. In Maharshi Vedavyasa's commentary uh, it is translated as the cognitive trance is accompanied by the appearances of philosophical curiosity, meditation, elation and egoism. So there are four stages that he gives of Sampragnata uh, Samadhi, which is Savitarka trance, the first stage, where philosophical curiosity is a superficial attempt of the mind to grasp any object, kind of like what we are doing now. We are just barely touching the surface. Savichara, that is meditation is a more subtle attempt, where indistinctness ends. You are experiencing it. Sananda. That is where elation is bliss. This is where meditation ends. And then sasmita, where egoism is the consciousness of being one with, with the self. I feel that I have merged with the self. That is where elation ends. And all these trances have something to grasp, which is alambana. Swami Satyananda so, Sampragnata Yoga constitutes association respectively with reasoning, reflection, bliss and individuality. Now, Samadhi is the goal of Yoga. It is a positive aspect. The negative aspect is led by Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Something is removed. Samadhi is the positive, that which is gained. We may say in Samadhi that the aspirant arrives at the pointless point of consciousness where there is no individuality. And the atmic vehicle alone functions in that state. So, Samadhi begins where Samsara ends. Where the consciousness has become free from the physical sphere. So, if one is able to withdraw the physical as well as the pranic sense of awareness, but remain aware of mental awareness, that is the beginning of Samadhi. It is not the end of Samadhi, it is the beginning. This Samadhi begins when the mind has gone deep into the Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha and the Anandamaya Kosha. Atman is subtler than all of these spheres of awareness, the sheaths. There are two more Koshas. These are Annamaya Kosha and the Pranamaya Kosha. Then we have the Manomaya, Vijnanamaya and Anandamaya Kosha. There is no physical content. So, beyond these spheres is Purusha. Samadhi is achieved when the consciousness goes deeper and deeper into the finer states, transcends the uh, spheres of object, motion, thought, instinct. In this process, the consciousness frees itself from the uh, physical pranic and other spheres. All five spheres, all five koshas are entangled with Prakriti, but when consciousness reaches the Anandamaya Kosha, it becomes practically free from the clutches of Prakriti. So by the time you reach Anandamaya, that is the state of bliss, it's, you're practically free from Prakriti. The whole range of Samadhi is classified under two. Sabija, which is the lower state, and Nirbija, which is the higher state. Sabija means with seed, Nirbija means without seed. In the lower state, that is Sabija, Mind has a fixed basis or content, the center or symbol, gross or subtle. Let's say you are meditating on a form, on Om, on a flame, on the vision of your favorite deity or guru. Okay, so there is pratyaya. Pratyaya is content. Okay, there is a symbol and there is a content for that symbol. So this is used typically by beginners for fixing the mind. 
and there are four kinds of bases according to which there are four kinds of samadhi so there are also sattvic samadhi tamasic samadhi rajasic pratyaya uh, samadhi based on sattvic pratyaya tamasic pratyaya rajasic pratyaya so the aspirant begins with the minimum requirement of pratyaya and as he goes higher he discards the pratyaya and as he enters into nirbija so where even the last basis of consciousness is dropped and the mind becomes fully free when all pratyaya is thrown away one reaches the state of higher samadhi right so here he is telling you basically what is the lower state which is sampragnata samadhi which has philosophical curiosity meditation elation and egoism this becomes the foundation swami vivekananda says the concentration called right knowledge is that which is followed by reasoning discrimination bliss and unqualified ego now he explains it slightly differently he says samadhi is divided into two varieties sampragnata and asampragnata sampragnata has four varieties in this samadhi comes all the powers of controlling nature the first is savitarka where the mind meditates upon an object again and again and there are two objects of meditation the objects of prakriti and the objects of purusha there are 24 objects of prakriti and the one sentient object which is purusha now when the mind thinks of the elements of nature by thinking of their origin their causation this is savitarka so patanjali uh, swami vekananda says that patanjali points out the possibilities of the science but again and again he reminds you that there are pitfalls of these powers because once you know the object knowledge is power and soon as you know an object you get power over it so when the mind meditates on different elements it gains power over them that meditation over external gross elements or where the object is the external gross elements is samitarka tarka means question savitarka means with question so questioning the elements that they may give up their truths and their past to the meditator is savitarka uh, uh, stage of samadhi sampragnata samadhi so when one struggles to take a question time and space that is what becomes nirvitarka without question when the meditation steps higher and takes the tanmatras as the object and thinks of them in time and space it is savichara with discrimination then when elements are given up as gross or subtle and the object of meditation is the interior organ when the thinking organ is thought of as bereft of the qualities of activity and uh, dullness it is sananda blissful samadhi in that samadhi we are thinking of the mind as the object of meditation and before the state that takes us beyond the mind when it has become ripe and concentrated all gross materials have been given up when sattva only state of ego remains but is differentiated from all objects this is asmita samadhi and the man who has attained what is called in the vedas as bereft of body occurs after this he can think of himself as without his gross body but with a subtle body those in this state are merged in nature and are called prakriti layas but those who do not stop at any state reach the goal which is the higher samadhi okay so he is saying you can reach these stages but you must not stop at these stages they are basically distractions bk sangar says practice and detachment develop four types of samadhi self analysis synthesis bliss and the experience of pure being through practice and detachment four types of awareness develop absorption of the consciousness synthesis uh, consideration and discrimination bliss oilation and a state of pure being here a distinction is recognized between the seer and the seen sampragnata samadhi consists of vitarka engrossment in analysis vichara engrossment in reasoning ananda bliss asmita experiencing the state of i you may wonder what is the difference between vitarka and vichara vitarka analysis is gross vichara reasoning is subtle is the uh, substratum okay of the reason 
Vitarka is an act of involvement by deliberate thinking which leads to the final cause, to distinguish, say, cause from effect. Vitarka is intellectual analysis, producing relative and conditioned knowledge. So, for instance, let me give an example. Apple falls from the tree. Okay. So, uh, the Vitarka might be, what is the cause? Okay, let's say there was a cat on the tree and it caused the apple to drop. But Vitarka Sampragnata is saying, oh, but why did the apple drop only downwards? Oh, this must be gravity, evidence of gravity inference. You know, to look at the uh, sort of basis. And this is further divided into Savitarka, which is deliberation, and Nirvitarka, which is non-deliberation. This is Vitarka. Vichara means differentiating knowledge. Process of investigation, reflection, consideration. It is also divided into reasoning, sanchana and non-reasoning, non-reasoning, nirvichara. Okay. So, as the experience comes to maturity, we reach ananda. Freeing, in, when you reach ananda, you are freed from the need for study and reasoning and intellectual application. And you dwell on the self alone. Then this is asmita rupa sampragnata samadhi. Thus, all six gradations of sabija samadhi are savitarka, nirvitarka, savichara, nirvichara, ananda, and asmita. There is a seventh stage of samadhi, which is virama pratyaya or asampragnata samadhi. And there is an eighth called dharma mega or nirbija samadhi. And so, in this process, one goes from gross to subtle. So, from vitarka to vichara to ananda to asmita, you are going from gross to subtle. So, B.K. Sangar's explanation is extremely, extremely technical, extremely detailed. Uh, he also explains how these apply to the brain. Savitarka and nirvitarka, nirvitarka belong to the function of the brain. They are attained by contemplation on gross elements. Savichara and nirvichara apply to the mind. And ananda up to mature intelligence, wisdom, not sense-based. Uh, and also, the front of the brain is Savitarka, and uh, the back is Savi Savichara, base is Ananda, and crown is Asmita, and Samadhi is reached when all these come together. So, he goes into great detail. I don't think it's possible to explain it in a medium like this. You have to sit and sort of really map it out and understand it for yourself. So, I encourage you to go to the light on... Uh, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali by V.K. Sengar, very beautifully explained. And he says that basically between Sabija and Nirvija is Virama Pratyaya, which is a Sampragnata Samadhi, which becomes a spiritual plateau. Okay. Osho, uh, at least in the book that I have, does not explain the Sutra. I know he ha does explain it in some other books, uh, but uh, the Sutra ahead. So I will have to search for this. But in case I don't get it, then I will change. I think he doesn't explain in great detail the entire Yoga Sutras. So in case that is done, I will replace you Osho from the next session. Bapra Stoller Miller says, Conscious cessation of thought can arise from various forms of conjecture, reflection, enjoyment and egoism. And she says, this sutra in particular has created a lot of debate and argument between uh, the commentators. Some argue that it refers to Samadhi. Uh, others say it refers to cessation of thought or Nirodha. So, she prefers to understand it as cessation of thought. So, in our selection of Bhashya, she is the only one who says this applies to cessation of thought. And she says on the first level, ordinary conscious processes are directed towards the aim of stilling the thought's activity. On subsequent level, cessation involves hyperconscious processes in which every modification of thought is eliminated and only subliminal impressions of past experience remain. And the conscious restraint of thought is related to seeded com contemplation, which we will get into in Sutra 46. So, I am not explaining that too much over here. For her, you have to remember that she thinks that this uh, applies more to cessation of thought, Chitta Vritti Nirodha, that is the first sutra. Um, the second sutra. So, uh, she applies this to that. Thank you for listening.
Tomorrow do come back for Sutra number 18. Do press subscribe, do share and send your questions and comments if you have any and I will try to respond to them in the subsequent Sutras. Thank you.